Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. I'm Gabby and uh, today we're going to talk about the Duke Audio ST01 Pro. Uh, this is little amplifier has been uh, selling like cupcakes because of its price. It's around 130 US or 180 uh, Canadian and uh, it sounds pretty good for quality and it's You've got tubes, you've got an amplifier, you've got basically a DAC built in. So it's quite the unit and it sounds darn good for the price. It comes with a decent remote control. The front is cute, it's got a VU meter and you can control the bass and the treble. The volume knob that acts as an input selector as well. On the back you've got the traditional speakers, you've got a Bluetooth uh, input, you have basically USB and auxiliary input, you have coaxial part of the DAC, optical and another USB. And also there's a line output in case you want to run a subwoofer or something similar. It is very interesting that the unit has two USB inputs, so I believe one of them is an input where you can actually send in a stream from your computer, which is very, very useful. So here it is, uh, side by side with another unit that is disassembled. Uh, it took me a while to get this apart, so I did that for you guys because a lot of people want to see what's inside the unit and uh, how it's made and I'll just go through with it uh, with you guys and tell you I was actually pretty surprised about the quality of the uh, the unit that we have here. Um, this is the uh, main uh, chip for the amplification, it's the 3250. On the amplifier chip there was a heat sink here I had to remove actually, there's some uh, thermal paste I'll have to put back on. Uh, to take out so actually I can tell exactly what chip it is. I will talk about this chip a little later. I will also compare it to the AIMA chip and uh, to uh, find out the differences. Overall it's got decent, you know, it's decent and uh, it's amazing like they can sell all this uh, and ship it to you and all that stuff for like such a low price and include a remote control on top. So the unit is made of two levels, so these can uh, go on top of each other, so this goes on top like this and then they all slide into the uh, box. And if I keep moving to the left here, uh, I have a surprise for you guys. This is the AIMA unit taken apart. It's very similar, but it is actually different. Uh, I'll talk about this a little bit later in the video because in this video we're going to focus on the uh, Duke Audio. The, uh, these are the tone controls that come out here, these are the potentiometers for them, so they're decent potentiometers. We still have the bass and treble uh, control, so you do have the option if you want to control a little bit, which comes in handy. Sometimes your speakers may not be exactly uh, for the room in perfect harmony, so you might want to tweak it a little bit, and this allows you to do so. In my view, at this price ratio, uh, I think uh, if you have tone control, it might actually be a good thing. I don't think you should really uh, stay clear from that. So in this video, not only I'm going to compare the sound of those two, and that's the beauty about uh, my channel being a DIYer, I can actually hook them up on an analyzer and basically analyze them both and see exactly how do they measure. And so we're going to measure them and listen to them and then we're going to come up with some conclusion to see are they really identical or is there any differences. So stay with me and let's find out. So I'm using the Digilent Analog Discovery 3 here which is an excellent piece of hardware for uh, testing your equipment. That and the other thing is the uh, Audio Analyzer Suite software from the YouTube uh, channel The Stuff Made. I strongly encourage you guys to check his channel and if you need to get the software, he's providing it free for all of us and I think we should thank him for that. Here you could see uh, the uh, testing uh, rig. I have a whole video about this, I'll put a link in the description below and also up top. So on the scope the uh, sine wave was really nice, both channels the same and fairly decent sine wave. The square wave fairly decent as well, not perfect perfect, but for a digital amp it's pretty decent. The uh, 
Frequency response was fairly good. There was a small dip in the high frequency toward the end from 10k and above, but it was just 2 dB, so not too bad. The distortion managed to stay under 1% for the most of it, and for power I managed to get about 60 watts on the supplied 24 volt power supply and about 80 watts on the 30 volt power supply that I have. These are under 4 ohm loads. So how did it do compared to the IEMA T9 Pro? It did actually pretty much similar. The uh, sine wave was fairly good as well. Same as the uh, square wave was pretty similar. The frequency response was a little bit lower from 200 down, but just by 2 dB. But again, go figure between the two. So the distortion was uh, a bit better and it stayed well under 1% for the entire frequency response. And I managed to get about 60 watts with the IEMA under 24 volt power supply, but it did about 87 watts with the supplied 32 volt power supply. So the internals again are fairly similar, they're pretty good quality on both units. And I was actually surprised I can pack so much for such little amount of money. Both units have very similar uh, build and approach but the, some of the uh, components are different and the layout is different and the design is different so are not really the same and if we have a really close-up look on the main amplifier chip we realize that they are actually the same chips here's a little close-up and here is a much bigger close-up you can see on the left is the AIMA and on the right is the Duke audio they are exactly the same. I'm not sure if these are genuine Texas instrument chips, but some of you could comment below. But they seem to perform really well, and I don't think you should expect a lot for $130. We need to keep realistic. So how does the Duke Audio ST01 Pro sound? Uh, so we've seen the, uh, the measurements, but how does it actually sound? Uh, to be honest with you, it sounded very similar to the IEMA. They both are built from the inside about the same, so there weren't much differences between the two. Uh, it sounded really good, uh, and uh, I, for a small system or a budget system, I think you can't go wrong. You're getting an amplifier, a DAG, and you got some inputs. Also, you can stream to it via Bluetooth. Uh, so it's got so many functions, all in the nice little box. You get the tubes, you get the, uh, the amplifiers, you get, you're marrying both the tubes with the uh, Class D amplifier, which is traditionally been a good, a good combination. So it sounded pretty darn good. Now there is a slight edge on the Duke Audio that I prefer over the AIMA is I personally love the tone control, especially when you're on a budget system like this. Because let's face it, your speakers, they're not going to be multiple thousand dollar speakers, so they're going to be budget speakers as well. And often budget speakers will either lack with some bass or maybe some treble or maybe too bright or so you could do some customization with the tone control and there's really nothing wrong about that and it's gonna bring the sound uh, to your liking and I think that will really be a very uh, good uh, thing for you. Now if you have the perfect speakers and you really still want to do one of these uh, you might want to stick to something that does not have tone controls like the IEMA and say no I want to stay in the pure camp. And either way, it's fine. As long as you're happy, I think we're, we're good. So overall, this is really good. Uh, like I said, the only difference is one the Duke Audio has a little USB uh, input. Other than that, they're both identical. They both use very similar tubes, but not exactly the same. Now you can roll these tubes and get some different tubes, which is you can try and try to get a little bit different sound out of it. And it's something you can have fun and play with and, uh, and, and go from there. So overall, I would say either one of them is, is good. Uh, this uh, video is we're trying to focus on the Duke Audio, so I would definitely give it two thumbs up, especially for its value. I'm going to put a link on the top here about uh, some of the streamers I've been building. There's going to be one that is moderately priced, and but at super, super high values can compete with some multiple thousand dollar streamers, and one on this side that doesn't cost much. It's still very good DAC as well. Uh, this is a proto 
Autodac here, and this guns are based on Ian uh, in Canada's uh, streamer. Uh, both are, are great and depend on your budget. Uh, take care, and I hope to see you again.